Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. We've known for a little while now that Orc and Goblin tribes have been on the way for Warhammer the Old World. In fact, they were announced on the game's launch day itself, and we were pretty sure that they would be the next faction. We just didn't know when they would land. And then at time of recording this, we're a couple of days out from the first pre-order going up towards the end of March. So I'm assuming that early April, the first models and the rules will be in people's hands. It was in March 2011 that the 8th edition Orcs and Goblins army book was released and I'm really looking forward to the Arcane Journal Orc and Goblin Tribes and while we've got an Orc and Goblin army list in the Ravening Hordes book, this Orc and Goblin Tribes Arcane Journal is the closest we've come to a new army book since that time and I'm really looking forward to flicking through it and finding all the extra flavorful army lists and characters and, and rules that will be in that book. Way back last year I painted a night goblin as a painting tutorial and then more recently only a few weeks ago I painted an orc boy. So with the release about to happen, I thought it was time to do another one. And this time up, it's the turn of a black orc. Now, my intention is to make this tutorial in two stages. The first half is super easy to follow along, especially if you're a beginner painter. No airbrushing used at all. No zenithal in this. I'm going to be using lots of dry brushing for the early stages. And then later on, we'll do some further highlights. And then in the second half of the tutorial, I will push the miniature a little bit further, do a few more highlights and, and make it look a little bit more special, but still very much tabletop. Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Baron of Dice, premium wargaming dice. Over 500 styles, over 4,000 customer reviews. Welcome to the best dice on the planet. I'm going to be using my favourite metal recipe, which is decayed metal and black metal from Scale 75, game air silver from Vallejo, and some oil wash grease. You can use non oil or Agrax Shade if you want instead. I also mentioned we're going to be doing some dry brushing, and what you want is one of these new style super soft dry brushes. They really make a difference. So we're starting off with the decayed metal and we're going to be using a dry brushing technique and I'm removing nearly all of the paint here and I'm using a bit of a textured surface. This is my turntable they use to airbrush on but I use it for a lot of other things as well. Lots of circular motions and I'm really slowly building up the paint here. The idea is to get a nice smooth finish but with no streaks. By having very little paint on the brush you can slowly build it up and it really picks out that detail. You will leave a little bit of black in the recesses and we want that to happen. We want to provide some shadow there and it really, really helps out. That's why we're not just painting on a flat coat of this paint. That's why I've decided to do the dry brushing. And that should really help when we do the final layers of dry brushing, give a quite a striking looking metallic color for a really, really simple beginner friendly technique. You can see you've got a really nice effect here. It looks almost gold with it dry brushed on. I, I would normally airbrush this myself. It looks a bit darker, but this is still a fantastic effect. And then we move on to black metal, and this is the next stage, and we're doing the same process. So we're brushing most of that paint off on a textured surface, and we're doing these circular motions and going all the way around the miniature. Because it's such a thin layer, some of that decayed metal, brownish colored metal, you can use a bronze. You don't have to use these exact colors. As long as you use a bronze, and a, a sort of a gunmetal type colour and then a brighter silver it should work but I'm a, I'm a big fan of these metallics I find them very very easy to use so they're worth getting hold of if you can but as you can see just continuing this same method working my way around the miniature building it up really really slowly and you get this really really smooth finish and it already looks pretty cool because this miniature is probably 80% armour it's such a quick unit to paint if you use a method like this now onto that top highlight, and this is Game Air. So it's obviously a little bit thinner, but it's still absolutely fine to use with a regular hairy brush. And I'm using the same technique again, but I'm focusing a little bit more on where the light would hit. So the tops of the blade, maybe not going all the way down, a little bit more up down motions from the top to the bottom, making sure I catch those edges where the light would be a little bit more than I, than I did with the others. And you can just see it slowly building up, catching those edges, adding the, the top shine where the light would be at the top. And you've ended up with this really nice three stage, three tone metallic effect. 
I think that's a pretty cool effect just with dry brushing a nice multi-tone metallic effect now we're going to go in and do the oil washes later or agrax earth shade if you choose not to use the oils but first we're going to move on to white gray from model color you could use gray sear because what we're doing here is blanking out the areas that are now metallic that you don't want to be metallic because we're going to lean heavily into contrast paints remember this is a miniature that we're trying to do a quick version of but it's still going to look pretty cool so i'm going to pick out all of the areas that are skin or cloth leather anything that's really not metallic and it's not loads of it showing but you've got the area of the face you've got inside the mouth and the teeth there's a little bit on the palms of the hands we've got a little bit around the edges of the arms as well so elbows and just underneath the armpits but there's very very little showing so just work your way around the miniature, making sure that you've picked out all of the areas that I've mentioned. You've got the horns and things as well. I don't think I mentioned that in my original list. Just take your time filling it out. Now, if you wanted to go for a more detailed approach, you could go for a darker gray here first and then do a little bit of a dry brush of white. But I find for this miniature and the method we're going to use, pretty much going straight back to this kind of white or this whitish gray, this off gray here is perfect for the job. And there you have it, you can see the stage we're up to now. So the first contrast colour I'm going to use is Saigor Brown from Citadel. And I've chosen this as the colour for his trousers. It's a nice, rich, darker brown with warm tones, almost reddish tones. And I think it just contrasts really, really nicely from the brighter silvers in the metallics. But it also kind of ties in a little bit with that warmer, darker, decayed metal that we started with. The next colour is Garagak Sewer, which is more of a, a mid-tone kind of brown, a perfect leathery kind of brown, very akin to sort of a snake bite leather colour of old. And I'm using this, funny enough, as all the leather areas. So we've got the belts, you've got little tassels and straps holding the armour on, you've got the scabbard of the sword and things like that. Next up, I've reached for my skeleton horde, also from Citadel Contrast, and there's a, there's a kind of an undershirt that you can barely see anything of underneath the armour, so I've just picked that out there, just the edges of it showing, and also use this as the base colour for the horns and for any nails that are showing, any teeth. And this is Express Colour Deep Purple. If you're not familiar with Express Colour, it's Vallejo's own version of contrast paints, and they are excellent. And I'm just using this inside the mouth. So it'll redden the tongue out. Um, it's a nice thin paint that settles into the recesses really nicely. So you've already got this natural highlight forming along the edge of the tongue there. And I just fill it in around the gums as well, and it works perfectly. Now we move on to the skin. I'm using a mix of Dark Angels Green and Contrast Medium. So the first point on that, it's probably two parts Dark Angels Green to one part medium the reason that i've added the medium is just to help it flow quite a bit the dark angels green is incredibly thick and in high in pigment and it's almost like a slightly thinned paint and if you apply it neat you just don't get quite the same effect and i really want this to be a one-stop shop for this for those looking for a quick solution for painting their black orcs now i will go on and highlight afterwards anyway but with the paint neat it just didn't really do that job for me now, if you wanted a quick to the table miniature, this is it. You've got your contrast paints on, you've got quite a striking metallic scheme. You maybe want to add a little bit of Nuln Oil or Agrax Earth Shade, but this would be perfect. Base them up and you go. But we're going to push on and do some highlights and really make them stand out. The first of those being Iraqi Sand. And I start to work on building up the tusks and the teeth and I'm building up that first layer and blending where the contrast skeleton horde has gone on and just starting to brighten them up slightly now we will return and add some white later on but this is just the first stage of that so sticking with the white-ish themes at the moment, we've got model color white gray and model air white. The white gray here I'm using as a base just to pick out the emblems that are on the armor. I don't want too much bright color on there. So we're going for white on this one. So there's a little skull on the front here. There's also one on the other side as well. Now I'm using the model air white. It's nice thin paint, so it's really good for those sort of further on highlights. I'm just picking out some highlights, some subtle lines around the edges of that undershirt here. And it gives you perfect control for highlighting the ends of things like these horns. And you can paint on thin lines that blend into that sort of darker layer at the top. It's also perfect to pick out the tips of those little teeth and really make them pop. 
Sticking with model colour, we have whole red and German pale brown, and these are just brilliant for highlighting browns. That whole range of browns is, is really, really good. And this is perfect for highlighting the Seigel brown, and you've seen me do it before on many other tutorials. The whole red first, and then we just slowly mix in the pale German brown, a little bit at a time, increasing the highlights, depending on how far you want to go and how much detail and refinement you want to push into the miniature. It's a similar story for Flat Earth and Tan Earth, and I use them in the same way, but this time to highlight over the Garagat sewer for that kind of leatherish colour. And again, just start with the darker tone, slowly build up and making thinner and thinner highlights, and away you go. So it's up to you how far you push it, how thin you make the edge highlights if you want to do them at all, whether you just want to go for a bit of a central highlight, but they are perfect colours to work with the base coat of that Citadel Contrast. And there's so little showing on this miniature that it's, it's worth just adding a couple of highlights, even if you just go straight to the top highlight and just do a couple of little lines here and there. It really makes the miniature stand out. Now it's time to highlight that skin, and I've got layer warp stone glow from Citadel. Now the skin looks pretty cool, especially on the face as it is, and this isn't an exact match for the top highlight that's built in with that contrast paint. The reason I'm using this is because it works perfectly with the darker shade of the Dark Angel's green rather than the top highlight. And I used the areas that are shown as top highlights, the way those contrast colours work. They, they're a little bit thinner on the raised surfaces. I'm using them as a guideline of what to colour in. And then putting this warpstone glow on those raised areas, you end up with a slightly different tone, but it just works so well with the base layer. So working my way around the miniature, you've got the arms are showing here that the contrast paint has given you those deep shadows in the recesses. So I'm just aiming at the high areas of those muscles and filling in with that warpstone glow. And it just really seems to work and, and make the miniature pop a little bit more, tidy it up a little bit as well, because those top layers are a little bit messy and this just really, really ties it up. If you want to stick with just the skin as it was, that is absolutely fine as well. If you've got a whole unit of 20 of these guys, you're not really going to notice that it's just a basic contrast layer, but this just turns the miniature into something a little bit more tidy, a little bit more of a traditional looking paint job. So a mix of Warpstone Glow and Sybarite Green is perfect for a further highlight so you wish to keep pushing it. And I am here, so I'm just going back to the face again to start with. A bit of a 50-50 mix at this stage and just really adding a few further highlights on top of that Warpstone Glow layer, leaving some of it showing, of course, and definitely leaving the recess shading. And again, it just adds another dimension and really makes it pop. And then you can just carry on slowly adding more and more of the Sybarite green until you've got a top highlight of just Sybarite green, maybe just on the tops of the cheekbones and right on the top of the bridge of the nose. It's up to you. Push it as far as you want to. But the mix looks very, very well with that sort of base layer of Dark Angel's contrast. It's the same method when you work your way round to the back of the miniature with the larger areas, which are the muscles. You want to make sure that you've got a, a bit of a blend there. So I placed a, a little line of the paint along the top of the muscle and then wet my brush slightly and just feathered and blended out. So it blended in with the, the basic layer that was there before. And here I am just going back with the, the pure silver light green and just adding a few marks to the, the bottom of the, the sort of the jaw and the bottom lip and on the top of the cheekbones and nose, as I said. So this is Vallejo Deer Armor FX Earth Texture, and this is the Dark Earth color. They do a few different colors. These are a great alternative to something like Sterling Mud. They're basically textured paint. They do quite a few different ranges. So the, the Earth Textures are the ones that are most like Sterling Mud, but you also have Mud Effects as well, which are a good, I believe, added on top after these. They're not quite as thick. Now, I'm painting this on really thin here because I'm going to be adding some oil washes, and that's why I'm putting this on first because I'm going to be an oil washes on the armor but I'm also going to be doing it on the base so why not do it all at the same time so I'm sort of skipping ahead and doing this so it has time to dry before I do that but I'm stippling it on here very very thin because once I've added oil washes and I've added some pigment to it I don't need a really thick layer it's just a choice on this miniature but I'm just demonstrating how you can get away with using very little I'm also gluing on a little bit of kitty litter here. Now I'm using super glue to make sure this stays on. It's quite porous stuff. This is the Katsan brand in the UK. You don't want to use any of the stuff that's absorbent and swells because that would be pretty nasty. So now it is time for that oil wash, and this is a ready-mixed oil wash from the Soilworks range from Scale 75 Coloured Grease, which is almost a slightly darker sepia colour. 
You've got lots of different colors they do. They do something called dark stains, which is blackish, which would be most similar to your non-oil. You're looking to expand upon your paints and you haven't tried them before. They also have a dark mud as well, which is a little bit closer to, to Agrax in terms of its sort of deeper brown. I find those three colors are a really, really good mix of what you need. Maybe use Army Painter Strong Tones. Those are great as well. Now, I, I'm a big fan of oil washers. I don't use them all the time but I like to use them on armour. I find the metallic paints are usually robust enough to handle these um, very, very well without any need of gloss varnishing beforehand to protect the miniature. Uh, ideal world, if you're using a lot of oil paints, you would often gloss varnish first. Now, you don't want to be doing that on, on miniatures of this size and, and when you've got areas you don't want to be all glossy that you'd have to mat them again afterwards. Now, the reason for using oil washes is because they don't pull as much and when they do pull, you can wipe them away and because they take a lot longer to dry as in hours in some cases you can go back and wipe them away and buff them away afterwards and you can also use a little bit of artist white spirit and wash them away with a cotton bud or q-tip depending on what part of the world you come from and it's just so manual and easy to use and when they dry as well when they dry in the crevices of things they also look like they were slightly weathered and dirty and it gives some really really good shading i just think you end up with so much more control from them i know people are a little bit nervous about using things that they haven't used before. The only thing you really want to remember is to use an old brush because it will, it will muck up your nice ones. Now you can use these very much like you would use a standard Games Workshop Citadel style wash or Army Painter Strong Tone or Medium Tone or Soft Tone style wash. And they, they go in all the recesses and pick out the detail really, really nicely for you. You can be quite targeted with them, very much a pin wash, just going around the sh edges or shades, or slop it all over. And when they dry, they evaporate quite a lot, so it gets rid of a lot of the pulling as it is. But as I said, you can really, really tidy things up. And if you're going for a nice, worn, weathered, unkept kind of look of metal these are these are great for it and i could have gone for a, a much darker look here but the, the method i've chosen today you could use on a, on a knight's armor as much as you use on an orcs and um, it's totally up to you i quite like armor to look fairly weathered and used rather than looking too shiny and, and, and glam um, but this is such an easy thing to do now if it runs over onto this the rest of the miniature as well it's not the end of the world because you can wash it away really really nicely just take it off again with the brush um, and it's just super super easy to use so do give it a try but if you don't want to um, and you've skipped forward in this um, tutorial so that you can see what happens at the end um, you know try your agrax earth shade for it it's absolutely fine I'm also using it on the base. I'll just put it straight on this neat cat sand here and it stains the outer surface. I make sure I get my brush into the sort of the holes where it goes right through so we don't have any white showing. But it's, it's as simple as that. I've not needed to paint them at all and it just gives you this really, really nice effect. I'm also putting it in patches on the base. You can completely cover the base if you want to. You can just put it on, on, on patches and it just again acts like you would be if you're adding Agrax Earthshade to a textured base. So now we're on to that tidying up stage I was talking about and we've got some sponge here. Now I can just use this directly on the miniature. I'm focusing just where the metallics are. I'm not knocking anywhere else. I don't want to, to wear away my paint, which is a danger. I am being quite jealous, but very much on those flat areas and just taking off anything that's pulled. Even though this is dry to the touch now, it does come away and it gives you this kind of nice buffed metal look. And as I mentioned, you can also use Artist White Spirit. And you do want to use Artist White Spirit or Sansador because it's far less horrible smelling rather than the, the stuff you might get at your DIY store used for actually cleaning your brushes after you've been painting walls and things. So again, I'm using a paintbrush here just to take it off the center anywhere that may have pulled slightly. You can't do this with an Agrax Earth Shade. You have to do this at the time. And when it's damp, you can also go back in with your, your sponge and stuff as well and just dry it off and, and take any of large pulled areas what you don't want to do is get it too wet and get right down in those crevices because that's the area when it dries it'll really add that depth and this is very much optional but i'm returning to the game air silver just to add and reinforce some of those edge highlights i'm very much focusing on a top to bottom downward brushing action here just catching where the light would and really refreshing those edges of the armor the edges of the sword and thing it really makes it pop especially over areas like the chain mail there which has been quite dulled by the the oil paints you can really just pick out a little bit on the edge and it just really gives it that extra dimension and then using some of that sponge or your 
messing around with earlier on you can just add a few little sponge chips here and the way you do that is dip it in your paint take most of it off on a kitchen towel dab it on the edge of a towel as well you can see the size of the dabs and that's the size you'll get when you dab it on the miniature very small areas you don't add loads you're not speckling it you're just adding a few little marks here and there and again it just really adds to that effect of old battered chipped so I'm just brushing in some pigment powder here. This is actually my, my waste tray of pigment that I brush over to stop the mess getting everywhere. It's a mixer of a couple of colours here, but you can see it's a brownish. I'm just brushing that into the texture on the base. I won't seal that. No need to seal it because it will change the colour. And then I'm just adding a few tufts to finish off. I think it just goes to show that you don't have to spend hours and hours on a base at all some really really simple methods we've got a very very thin layer of texture we've got oil paints we've got tufts we've got pigments and the base looks really really cool it's a warhammer orc so of course we have to play around with some blood for the blood god so i'm just aiming for the edge of the weapon first and then i clean my brush off a little bit add a little bit of moisture and then just feather out and down so it looks like that it's dripping down without it being too garish and you can just take some of it away blend it out a little bit and you get a nice splatter effect and then i can just go around and, and add it to other areas on the miniature is always really good to to hide any little blemishes anywhere you made a little mistake just a little splot of blood um and yeah it looks cool on a warhammer miniature i always love the excuse to play around with blood effects I also decided just to crack out a bit of Dirty Down Rust. Again, if you're not familiar with that product, do go and give it a search. It's really, really easy to use. You do want to use old brushes with it as well because it will kill your nice ones. But again, it's something that you can just add into areas of a miniature. If you apply it really thick and concentrated, you get a dark, kind of wet-looking rust effect. If you blend it out and feather it out, you get a slightly lighter colour. And if you kind of just put it into the recesses and, and blend it out nicely, it just discolors the metal slightly it doesn't always look necessarily like a dry decaying rust really fun to play around with it you can do so much with it it's not cheap a bottle but it does last a very long time now i prefer to add a black base rim we all have our own choices of colors i think the black rim there just really edges off that very very simple base suddenly looks really really cool and it couldn't be simpler anyone could do it a new painter that's never painted anything before could be taught to do that really really a simple effect on the basis and there we have it one finished black orc now some of the the highlighting and things on the skin and the leather was sort of intermediate level but the rest of it was very much basic so even if you did all the effects all the metallic stuff and the basing but didn't do any of the highlighting on the other areas you still have a stunning looking miniature and that's something I try to achieve with all my tutorials. I want to, people to realise that uh, there's a lot of techniques that are actually really, really simple that don't require any advanced techniques at all. So we've done dry brushing here and then we've used the power of oil washes. We've used the power of mud effects and pigments and blood effects. And you've got this really, really kind of fairly cool looking miniature without really doing any of the real high-end skills. Now, I appreciate that the skin, while it's still fairly basic, some people won't want to go back and do all the little edge highlights, but, and that's why I, I chose contrast paints for those as well. So if you're looking to get your army on the table relatively quickly, but still look fairly striking, I think a relatively new painter could copy a lot of those techniques and still have a very very a cool looking miniature now if i was painting this this as a unit myself i would do those dry brush layers with an airbrush because that's something i'm used to doing but i appreciate I, I use an airbrush an awful lot in my tutorials and i wanted to show that it could be achieved with a with a dry brush as well and it, and it definitely was my, my son's painting an orc and goblin army at the moment and it was that kind of technique with the dry brush that got me thinking about what I'd teach him to do. He's only nine, I don't want him set loose with my airbrush just yet, but I could teach him how to do those dry brushing stages. And maybe he won't want to do the, the three colors for the metals, but I think he'd probably like to do one or maybe two. And I definitely think it's, it's something that you could teach, as I said, to someone that's very new or young and, and still get a nice effect for the miniature. So let me know what you think about it. Let me so as I mentioned right at the start of the video, I have already done a Night Goblin and an Orc Boy tutorial, so do check those out. I have pop links in the show already for those. Um, links at the end, and if you go back and search in my Old World um, folder or, or playlist for the channel, there is a lot of stuff on there. An awful lot of it is tutorial, but there's some discussion stuff as well on there as well. So if you're new to the channel because you're excited about the release of Orc and Goblin Tribes and you've been searching on YouTube and you've come across this 
this video please do go and check those out um, especially if you've enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed it please do give us a like drop us a comment and let us know what you think really really helps the channel be seen by other people the channel has a really really super friendly discord that's growing all the time a lovely group of people over there talking about any war game under the sun doesn't just have to be warhammer the old world i cover pretty much anything and anything on the channel and i also do have a patron as well for those looking to support the channel further you can find the links to all of those in the video description and thank you very much to my existing patrons for all the support i really really do appreciate it i've got lots more tutorials on the way for warhammer the old world the marauder giant will be on his way soon so if you're a fan of orcs and goblins there will be something else orc and goblin themed within the next couple of weeks so do look out for that one but in the meantime thank you very much for watching take care and i'll catch you soon